While the performing arts are heavily represented in 5th edition, there's much left to be desired for those wanting to play a character powered by the visual arts. So in this video, I'm bringing you a character build that will have you picking up the paintbrush to bring a splash of color to the world. Hey everyone, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack. This is Josh and thank you for watching. Before jumping into the build, here's some things to keep in mind. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10 as most campaigns are played in this level range. And builds on this channel are built with a focus on the concept, but also will be viable for combat and roleplay. There is one goal I'm shooting for to turn a painter into an adventurer for this build. Our painting ability will be infused with magic. I will be choosing options that will help support this idea that either changes their flavor or offers flexibility in their use. For our ability scores, prioritize intelligence as this will influence our ability and skills. Intelligence isn't often associated with art as art is often perceived to be tied to emotions, but this is necessary in order to function mechanically. Intelligence represents our knowledge of references used in our art, different painting techniques, artistic fundamentals such as color theory, and other artists' work. Getting into this build's race and background choices will further expand on this. Follow this up with wisdom as our character is highly perceptive. Not only do we perceive what is physically in front of us, we are in tune with our emotions and are able to sense the mood of those around us. We use this to draw inspiration for our work. Then choose constitution for a decent amount of hit points. Next is dexterity for some bonuses to our armor class even if it's just minor. We are slightly more nimble than others but aren't necessarily the quickest. Follow that up with charisma and strength is our dumb stat. While there is an assumption that all playable races and the cultures they are tied to have some form of art, many of these forms of expression are not shown or feel prominent with many of them. Most notably, elves and dwarves have direct ties to creation and art through their gods Corellian and Moradin respectively, and they should be a natural fit for this idea. But with monsters of the multiverse introducing some lore changes to some of the races, it led me to choose something less obvious. So for this build's race, I went with the Kenku. Kenku allows us to place a plus two into one ability score and a plus one into another, or put a plus one into three ability scores of our choice. We also gain the expert duplication feature which grants us advantage on checks made to make exact copies of someone else's work or our own. Kenku recall grants proficiency with two skills of our choice and advantage on skill checks we make with skills we are proficient with. For the skills that went with perception to reflect our keen eye, as we are aware of the surroundings that we draw inspiration from, and nature to recall information and imagery of flora and fauna for our paintings. Mimicry has us able to fool others through sound if they fail an insight check against our DC which is 8 plus our proficiency bonus plus our charisma modifier. In order to pick up the necessary proficiency and tools for a painter, I went with the guild artisan background. Guild artisan has us tied to a painting guild that our Kenku may have formerly worked for. We gain proficiency with the insight and persuasion skills, painter supplies, and a language of our choice. Insight reflects our ability to sense the emotions and intentions of others, and painter supplies will allow us to paint. The Kenku's previous lore had them cursed with the inability to create on their own. Monsters of the Multiverse removed this, but left them with the ability to copy. With this in mind, this Kenku was a member of a painting guild, hired to recreate or reproduce pieces on the behalf of the guild. When they discovered or were gifted a magic paintbrush, they decided to break away from their guild and travel the world to create their own path. Let's get into the level breakdown to find out how we get this magic paintbrush. While the bard is the usual option for many art inspired concepts and the artificer is another option for any concept that has a tool focus, I'm instead going with the wizard class. Starting at level 1 as part of our wizard class proficiencies, we can choose two skills and I went with arcana and history. Arcana and history fuel our imagination drawing upon our memory of events, historical figures, supernatural beings, and locations in our art. We also pick up the arcane recovery feature and spell casting. Arcane recovery will let us continue to cast spells, recover a couple of spent spell slots on a short rest. Now here are my suggestions for cantrips and first level spells. Acid Splash or Firebolt as our offensive cantrip option. Acid Splash could be us trying to cover our enemies with paint, while Firebolt could be us drawing a small fireball in the air and flinging it at our enemies. Mage Hand, Minor Illusion as our go-to option to put our magic brush to use. Physical illusions are painted while the noises created through the cantrip could be done like sound effects in comic books before manifesting. Chromatic Orb, Color Spray, Disguise Self, Find Familiar, Fog Cloud, Grease, Ice Knife, Elucidary script, mage armor, magic missile, and silent image. With level 2, our wizard subclass kicks in, and we're going to change the studious flavor of the Order of Scribes Wizard to a painter. As an Order of Scribes Wizard, we gain the Wizardly Quill and Awakened Spellbook features. Wizardly Quill is flavored to be our magical paintbrush. It can produce the color of ink of our choice whenever we use it to draw, it cuts down on our time to copy spells into our spellbook, and we can erase anything we drew or wrote with it as a bonus action. Awakened Spellbook is our paint palette, canvas, or sketchbook. We can use it as a spellcasting focus, and it knocks off the extra 10 minutes added to whenever we ritual cast a spell. The big ability of this feature is that it allows us to replace the damage type of one spell with another spell of the same level. This could be flavored as something simple as using a different color for the spell as we pan it before releasing it. At level 3 we can start casting second level spells and here are my recommendations. Darkness which is us blotting an area with black paint, Dragon's Breath painting a draconic mouth on ourselves or an ally, Flaming Sphere, Block of Familiars, Invisibility, Mirror Image which is us painting duplicates of ourselves, Nathar's Mischief, Skyrite, and Web. Next at level 4 we have the option between an ability 
score increase for our feet, and I went with the feet choosing Meta Magic Adept. With Meta Magic Adept, we can choose two options from the Sorcerer's Meta Magic abilities and have two points to spend on them. This feat represents our ability to alter and change our art similar to the damage swap from Awakened Spellbook. I chose Quicken Spell and Twin Spell. Quicken Spell is the equivalent of doing a quick sketch of a drawing. Twin Spell is simply us adding the same details to a piece of art. For level 5, we get our big power spike with third level spells, and here are my recommendations Fireball, Lightning Bolt, or Melt's Minute Meteors as our damage options. Fly, which will be us giving a pair of wings on ourselves or our allies. Hypnotic Pattern. Leoman's Tiny Hut, Major Image, Phantom Steed, and any of the new summon spells from Tasha's. Summon Fey, Summon Lesser Demons, Summon Shadow Spawn, or Summon Undead. This could be us putting our imagination to use, bringing one of our images to life for a short time to aid us on our adventure. With level 6, we gain the Manifest Mind feature from our subclass. As a bonus action, we could summon a familiar like spectral object that allows us to hear, see, and cast spells from its position. Just like the creatures we summon with our spells, this spectral object could just be an image we have animated through magic. When we hit level 7, we can start casting 4th level spells and here are my suggestions. Dimension Door is ripped straight out of a cartoon. We paint a doorway that takes us to another location. Ivar's Black Tentacles, Hallucinary Terrain, Ice Storm, Leoman's Secret Chest, Mordekainen's Faithful Hound, Mordekainen's Private Sanctum, Summon Aberration, Summon Construct, Summon Elemental, or Summon Greater Demon, and Wall of Fire. At level 8 we have the option to choose between an ability score increase or a feat, and this time I went with the ability score increase choosing intelligence to boost the accuracy of our spells. Hitting level 9 we can begin casting 5th level spells and here are my suggestions. Bigby's Hand, Creation, Pass Wall, Seeming, Summon Draconic Spirit, Wall of Force, or Wall of Light. And finally for level 10, we could spend our downtime creating a spell scroll of 1st or 2nd level with the Master Scrivener feature. This is our character painting a simple picture or sketching out an idea that we or another of our spellcasting allies can use to cast a spell. Now for our pros and cons. For our pros, the spell list really encourages a player to be as descriptive with what they are conjuring and find creative ways or opportunities to utilize the illusion based spells. For those looking to take a more aggressive approach in combat, this spell list packs them. Summoning damage and crowd control spells will be at your disposal to dish out some pain. Now for our cons. The damage swapping abilities will be underutilized with this build, and will hardly work with many of the higher level spells I recommended. Getting the most use out of the feature will be primarily done with the lower level spells. Just as I mentioned for the pros, the illusion spells do require some creativity to get the most out of them. For tables that are a bit more literal with the rules, or rigid with how illusions work in the game, may find that the illusion spells underperform. With that said, I want to hear from you. What kind of artist character would you build? Let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, I'm out of here. Have a good one.